In this video, we'll talk about how to prove if and only if statements. So let's start with some definitions. A theorem is a mathematical statement that can be proven to be true. So in this video, we'll show an example of one, which is an integer n is odd, if and only if n squared is odd. So typically a theorem is some sort of major result that we end up using often in other proofs. A proposition is a less important theorem. So we've proved one in an earlier section. We proved that n squared plus 5n plus 8 is even for all integers n. That's true, which does make it a theorem. It's just not as widely used of a result, and that's why we can call it a proposition. Finally, a corollary is a theorem that's a direct result of another theorem. And we'll see some examples of this in, in this video. Okay, so if I'm trying to prove P if and only if Q, I have to show two things. I have to show P implies Q. So if P is true, then Q is true. And I have to show that if Q is true, then P is true. I gotta show both directions. So let's do an example. So this problem says, let N be an integer prove n is odd if and only if n squared is odd. So because I have an if and only if statement, I have to show both directions, the forward direction and the reverse direction. So in the forward direction, which I'm indicating with this arrow, we'd assume this, this part is true, that n is odd, and try to prove that n squared is odd. The second part is true. Okay, so typically, anytime I'm trying to prove something, I do my scratch work. For this example, I'm gonna dive right into the proof, um, in part because we've seen some examples like this before, but also in part just because we're gonna be proving multiple things in this video, and not to make it too, too long. Okay, so I start off by writing down what we get to assume is true, and that's the if part. So I'm gonna let n be odd. That's what we get to assume is true. And then we write down what that means. So what's the definition of being odd? Well, it's that there exists k, which is an integer, such that, let's write that t better, such that n equals 2k plus 1. Okay, so now we can plug that into n squared, so we can do our manipulations. So then n squared will be equal to 2k plus 1 getting squared. And if we distribute this out, we get 4k to the 2 plus 4k and then plus 1. So we're really hoping that this n squared thing, this thing that we have here, is going to be odd, which means I really want it to be equal to 2 times some, ooh, I really want it to be equal to 2 times some integer plus 1. Well, I see the plus 1 here, which means in the other part of it, I'm hoping I can factor a 2 out. Okay, but I can't, so let's do that. So 2 factored out leaves me with 2k squared plus 2k, and then parentheses plus the 1. And now, nice, the thing in the parentheses is an integer because k is an integer, and all we're doing here is we're just multiplying or adding integers together. So let me relabel that quantity. So I'm going to let... Because I already have a k in here, maybe I can call this thing k2. Let k2 be equal to 2k squared plus 2k. So I'm going to say that this whole thing is an element of z. It's an integer. All right. So now I'm going to restate what n squared equals. So then, using this relabeling, then this means that n squared equals 2 times the thing in the parentheses, which we just called k2, and then plus that 1, where the k2 is an integer. I'm just asserting this again because, well, now that's the definition of what it means for n squared to be odd. It looks like 2 times an integer and then plus 1. All right, so I'm ready to state that conclusion. Thus, n squared is odd. Okay, and that completes this direction of the statement, of the my if and only if. If n is odd, then n squared is odd. We've now proven that. Okay, so we can get a corollary from this because we've seen that if we have an if-then statement, the contrapositive is equivalent to it. So the contrapositive would say if the conclusion is false, 
So that would be if n squared is even, then the hypothesis, which is the if part, that is going to be false. So then n is even. So that is equivalent to what we just proved. We just proved if n is odd, then n squared is odd. We now know that's true, which means this contrapositive is now true as well. If n squared is even, then n is even. Okay, so that's one of the really nice things about proving these if-then statements, because we get these corollaries from the contrapositive for free. All right, so let's do the reverse direction. So for the reverse direction, we have if n squared is odd, then n is odd. Okay, so I first want to give you an opportunity to try this. So I, I'd like you to pause the video for about five minutes to really try this one on your own. Again, these times when you pause the video to try these proofs on your own, these are the most important times in these videos. So really take advantage of this time. It's a way for you to kind of assess how well do you understand this stuff and are able to apply it on your own? Because ultimately, that's the skill that you are trying to build. So pause it in four, three, two, one. Pause it and try this on your own. All right. Hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried it. Let's talk about it together now. So first, if we try a direct proof on this, we get to assume that n squared is odd. So that would mean that n squared, I'm just going to do some scratch work. That would mean n squared has the form 2k plus 1. And my goal is to get something about n. So I guess I could square root both sides. So I'd get n here. Square root both sides means I put a plus or minus. Square root of 2k plus 1. So somehow I need to show that this whole thing over here is odd. But, I mean, I do see an odd looking thing here, 2k plus 1. But it's inside of a square root. And it's unclear, like, how we can simplify this further. So we're not sure how to handle this. Not sure how to handle, how to handle and simplify this. So I'm going to put a sad face. So as a result, I don't think a direct proof is going to be very helpful. So maybe we can try using the contrapositive. So the contrapositive of this would say if the conclusion is false, so if n is instead even, then the hypothesis is false. So then n squared is even. And why this is going to be nice is because now I get to assume that n is even, and that gives me something more concrete and easy to work with. So again, I want to just drive right into the proof rather than doing the scratch work, but I'd encourage you to do that, and hopefully you had a chance to think about that during your pause. So, okay, I get to let n be even. That's what I assume is true when proving this contrapositive. So then I write down what this means. This means there exists a k. Ooh, and whoops, I'm realizing that in the last part of the problem, I already used the variable k. So it's best to use a different variable. I don't want to reuse the same variable that I already used. So maybe I'll call this one j. There is a j, which is an integer, such that n equals 2j. OK, so I want to show that n squared is even. So maybe I can substitute this in now and do my manipulations. So then n squared would be equal to 2j getting squared, which is 4 times j squared. I'm really hoping that that's going to end up being even, which means I'm really hoping that this will be 2 times some integer. So I'd like to be able to factor a 2 out of this. So let's do that. I can factor a 2 out and be left with 2 times j squared. And the thing in the parentheses is an integer because j is an integer, and we're just multiplying integers together. So I'm going to relabel that. So let's let, maybe I can call this one j2. Let's let j2 be equal to 2 times j squared. So that is an integer. OK, so now I'm going to restate what n squared is. So then my n squared equals 2 times the thing in the parentheses. So it's 2 times j2, where the j2 is an integer. OK, but that's the definition of what it means for n squared to be even. So thus, n squared is even. 
So we've proven this contrapositive statement. We've proven, proven that contrapositive statement. And that means, so by, I can say by contraposition, the original thing that we were trying to show is true. So this means that if n squared is odd, then n is odd. We've just proven that. Okay, and in doing this, we've actually demonstrated the corollary. The corollary of this if-then statement is the contrapositive, which we already stated. I'm just going to write it more formally as a corollary here, which says if n is even, then n squared is even. That is now true. So putting together the two parts we've just proven, the forward direction and the reverse direction, that completes our if and only if proof. So therefore, we now get to say, therefore, n is odd, n is odd, if and only if. So I'll abbreviate that as IFF, if and only if, n squared is odd. We've now proven that this is true. So I'll put my square shaded in to indicate I'm done with the proof. And the corollary of this that I now get to state is, well, if I put my two corollaries together, these two corollaries together, we have another if and only if statement, which is if n is an integer, n is even if and only if n squared is even. So we've established that corollary as well as this original statement.